As you know, we're in the business of telling you what happened and why it happened and give you some analysis about what it might mean to your life. We're not really in the business of telling you what we think is going to happen. That said, let me just say right now, the price of gas is going to go up. Now, I know other people aren't really reporting on that, but it is. It's about to go up, and it's because of something Saudi Arabia is doing. Haven't seen this on the news much, have you? Well, uh, it came up yesterday during the White House press briefing. John Kirby was at the podium, and here's what he had to say. How do you all interpret Saudi Arabia's decision to unilaterally cut oil production? We'll let them speak for their decision uh, to cut production. What we're going to stay focused on is making sure uh, that there's a balance between supply and demand. You see the price of oil was not dr dramatically affected by uh, this announcement um, of, of these additional cuts, and the uh, price of gasoline continues to come down. Uh, so the president's going to stay focused on what's best for the American people, what's best for our economy, um, and making sure that we're, that we're looking after those needs, and we'll let the Saudi Arabians uh, speak for themselves in terms of this decision. To, to wow, so casual about this. Saudi Arabia is deciding they're going to slash oil production. Obviously, it's going to have a huge ripple effect. Hey, you know, it didn't affect the price of oil. Everything's fine. Yeah, whatever. They're going to do what they want to do. Real sense of urgency there at the White House. Remember this moment because they're going to be running around like chickens with their heads cut off coming up in a couple of months. Joining us right now is Daniel Turner, Executive Director of Power of the Future. Maybe I'm being an alarmist. It's my prediction. But what do you think? It seems to me that when Saudi Arabia decides that they're going to drastically cut their oil production, it's going to drive the price of gas up. Absolutely. It's going to have an impact. And, and the prices uh, really won't be felt for a while because the cuts don't happen until July. But John Kirby's not telling the fullness of the truth here. Um, gas pri Oil prices were up around $3 a barrel once that announcement was made. And, and his second line of how gas prices continue to come down is not even really all that accurate. Yes, they're down from their all-time highs of nearly $5 a gallon, but there's still more than $1.50, $1.60 a gallon higher than when Biden took office. So, you know, why do you why do they continue to fudge these numbers and not tell us the fullness of truth like we're a bunch of children? Yeah. Yeah, that was the most striking thing. He said, as you know, prices and gas gas prices continue to go down. Aren't they up well over a dollar from uh, when Joe Biden first took office? And actually, last I checked at my local station, they're up a little bit from last week. They're not going down. It's actually the opposite. No, they're not. And that's driving the price of, of everything to be higher because right. almost everything in the world is manufactured or transported or, or uh, uh, made with uh, fossil fuels. And so when you've made energy expensive, uh, ask, you know, ultimately the voters are going to decide, ask the mom who's trying to feed her family and go to the grocery store. Yeah. Ask anyone driving to work. Right. So so this nonsense that gas prices are coming down again, they are down from their all time high, <laughs> but they are still considerably higher from when Biden took office. So Daniel Turner, help me out here because Saudi Arabia, kind of a big player on the global oil production scene. They make this announcement. What is the domino effect here in terms of other countries and the decisions they're going to make? Yeah, well, oil, like all commodities, is is uh, priced on the global supply. And America used to be the world's largest producer. And we have foregone that under the Biden administration because of his green agenda. So the Saudis are stepping up. And it feels like the 70s all over again. Yeah. The Saudis see weakness. Um, and, and Saudi Arabia, let's be really frank here. Saudi Arabia is not a good actor. Um, the Saudi oil does not belong to the Saudi people. They don't take their excess profits and, and build schools for women, right? So what the Saudis do is all the money is for the Saudi family, for the king and, and his family. And they are worth yeah. hundreds of billions. Some people estimate almost a trillion dollars. So they don't care that they're making prices higher, right? They don't care that they're bringing hardship to the world. All they care about is money. They are not good actors. The only way to stop the Saudis is to outproduce them. And we were doing that not long ago, um, but Biden has decided to choose a different path. Uh, the good, the, the well-being of Americans be damned. Boy, you know, Daniel, it, 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 I love getting all melancholy and thinking about ancient history. You think back, how long ago was it when we actually had complete and total energy independence and we didn't have to worry about Saudi Arabia or Russia or Venezuela or other of these hostile countries? How long ago was that, Daniel? Yeah, exactly. It was 2018, 2019, the beginning of 20. And of course, COVID upset everything. But we also have to remember, yes, we did see gas under $2 a gallon nationally. And that was incredible. And inflation 
only grew at 1.4%. And that was absolutely incredible. And, and we had a hugely successful economy. But we also had a lot of quiet in the world, right? So, so not just are the Saudis bad actors and what they're doing, but the other bad actor in OPEC Plus is Russia. Yeah. So if you've got a Ukraine flag in your emoji and you're in Congress and you're telling people, I stand with the people of Ukraine. Well, if you don't believe in American fossil fuel dominance, you don't, because this green agenda is funding Vladimir Putin's war as well. And if it's Pride Month and you say, I stand with the gay community, well, in Saudi Arabia, they throw them off rooftops. Yeah. So you can't have it both ways, right? You either stand with these communities or you don't. And by being a fossil fuel advocate, I stand with those communities. It's a great point, Daniel. You actually led me to my next question, which had to do with Russia, uh, because you're right. The people who are celebrating Biden's agenda here, which is actually driving the price of oil globally up, they're funding that war. They're actually making Vladimir Putin and his war machine richer as the price of that oil comes out. You want to hurt Russia and you want to help Ukraine, the best thing you can do is have the cheapest gas on the planet and have a great alternative other than Russia. And our policies work exactly against that. Exactly. And and that's why I'm glad you mentioned the, the ancient history of 2019, right. because we had lower prices, we had a stronger economy, we had a more quiet and, and, and tame world. And it's only a matter of time until we start seeing those headlines that we saw during the early part of the, 20, uh, the 2000s, 2010s. Tensions in the Straits of Hormuz, uh, oil tankers seized by Iranian agents, right? This is what happens when we make OPEC the world's uh, uh, oil and gas king. And we're making them king again for this green agenda, and no one is better off as a result. Uh, Daniel, if I could ask you a couple of other questions not related to the oil production, but I know that you can handle it. The first has to do with this war on natural gas. You're seeing on gas stoves and on other gas appliances. New York is now uh, restricting new buildings with gas stoves. Is there a shortage of natural gas in this country? Because last I checked, I th don't we have like the largest reserves on the planet? We have more natural gas in Pennsylvania alone to fund to, to to power our entire nation, let alone our allies. No, this is the opposite of what what we see in the ESG movement, right? The ESG movement, which tries to hurt the fossil fuel industry from the financing side, from the investment side, um, and then on the back end, how do we get rid of all fossil fuel products? And if you don't have a gas car because we've made them illegal, if you're not allowed to have, a, and that's of course oil, but a, a natural gas stove, if you're not allowed to have a natural gas hot water heater, well, then then why do we need fossil fuels, right? If we've banned all right. of these things, then you don't need them. And that's the whole purpose behind this. It's trying to drive away the market for these products, which the American people want. It is driving uh, more people to electricity, though. And there's two questions about that. The first is, my understanding is about 60% of our electricity comes from fossil fuels. It comes yeah. from coal plants. It comes from gas-fired plants, number one. So you're not really doing what you think you're doing. But secondly, can our power grid take this? Have they taken this into account yet, Daniel Turner, as they continue to move people to charge their cars on the grid and get off of natural gas? So now your stoves and ovens are going to be on the grid and everybody's getting more charged. I know in my home, when my kids are visiting, every outlet is full of a phone charger or device or a, a Xbox. Can our grid take it? No, not at all. And, and it shows how there is not a serious policy in play at this administration, because if we're driving everyone to electric, electric items, electric appliances, electric cars, then clearly we need a more robust electric grid. And, and it is becoming common now, and your audience knows this, it's becoming common for your governor or your mayor to send out a tweet and say, hey, everybody, please don't do laundry tonight, or hey, everybody, turn off your air conditioner. Right. Uh, you know, I'm not that old, but in my childhood, that we never got those messages before. We were never told by my Mayor Cuomo when I was a kid growing up in Queens uh, by Governor Cuomo, hey, everyone, turn off your AC. So why is our electric grid so weak now? And it's because we have gone off of reliable fossil fuels to this wind and solar, which quite frankly just does not work, period. Don't tell me it's the future. Don't tell me it's going to be there one day. Right now, it does not work, yeah. and everyone knows it. You're right. It's, it's like suddenly we're all living on green acres, and we have to patch together the circuits to make sure that we don't lose our power. But we don't get the benefit of that charming Arnold the Pig or that very hot Ava Gabor as our wife. <laughs> but I digress. Daniel Turner, thanks for joining us. Good talking with you. <laughs> it was a good time, Larry. Thank you. Come on. Ava Gabor was hot. All the Gabor sisters were hot, except that Ariana Huffington. She was weird. Okay, that's a Dennis Miller joke. More to come on O'Connor tonight.